Hey guys, how's it going? Angus here from Maker's Muse. Just a quick video today. What I've got here is a quadcopter frame from Thingiverse. And each of the four arms are made from a different type of filament. So I've talked about different filaments in the past. PLA versus ABS, which is better, blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of really cool exotic filaments on the market now. And two of these arms are made from such exotic filaments. So we have PLA. So the gray arm is PLA. PLA is pretty stiff. If you've watched my previous videos, I'll mention that it's quite brittle. That's usually the case. Uh, there is some uh, strength modified PLAs, but in general, it's pretty brittle, but fairly stiff. And then we have ABS. So ABS is fairly um, tough. You know, it's, it's not as stiff as, a as PLA, but uh, it has a bit of flex to it. It's um, not going to crack and break on you, but it's not very stiff. The other two arms, however, are fairly interesting. This arm is exceedingly flexible. This is TPU, otherwise known as thermal polyurethane. And in this circumstance, it's completely useless as a quadcopter arm, but I'm just demonstrating it's really tough in the fact that you can spring it back, twist it, run over it with a car probably, and it would be fine. It just, it bends back to shape. Uh, really chemical resistant as well. And it's quite unknown at the moment in terms of 3D printing. Not many people print with it, which is a bit of a shame because I've been doing a lot of experiments with it and it's quite easy to print with. You, you don't get the best quality. There's a little bit of stringing, but it's nowhere near as bad as something like Polyflex or um, Ninja Flex, where it's really, really rubbery and and, fle and uh, elastic. TPU isn't elastic as such, it's just flexible, which is really nice because it's still pretty strong. So you're thinking like flex couplers or shock mounts, things like that, where they need to be pretty tough. I would go with TPU if you're trying that. And this last filament, if you're familiar with anything from Colorfab, is their famous carbon fiber XT filaments. So uh, Colorfab pretty much got their XT branded filament, which is Amphora Copolymer. It's already a really tough plastic. I'm not quite sure what the um, the proprietary mixture is. I relate it to a bit like PET in terms of its uh, sort of strength and flexibility, but they've added 20% uh, carbon fiber into it for their new carbon fiber filament. And this stuff is ridiculously stiff. Uh, it is twice as stiff as regular PLA, like I'm really talking on it and I can barely bend it. It's nuts. And in terms of printing with it, it's actually really easy to print. Uh, so this whole frame, this whole quadcopter frame was printed on the Flashforge Dreamer. And the settings I used were based in uh, Simplify 3D. And what I did is I printed a lot of these parts with an ABS raft, uh, with the exception of the PLA print. The PLA was done with the PLA raft, but the ABS part the carbon fiber and the TPU were all done with ABS rafts and it works really well. So uh, in terms of printing, I print the TPU quite slowly because it's very flexible, but I print it at the same temperature as ABS, so about 230 degrees. The carbon fiber, the Colorfab XT CF20, I print that at 250 degrees uh, with the uh, ABS raft. And it's very important to note with this filament, that when it's hot, I print with a heated bed, you know, 100 degrees or so, it's very pliable when you take it off the bed initially. So let it cool down all the way before you take your parts off, because although it's ridiculously stiff at room temperature now, off the bed, it was really, really pliable while it was hot. So it's very easy to get like a really perfect flat print, like these prints weren't warping. Um, and then you could easily get the spatula under it and just bend it, which would suck. So yeah, so these are the filaments that I've been playing around with recently. Special thanks to uh, X3D for lending me the Colorfab uh, carbon fiber filament. So just in case you're wondering how it comes, that's the Colorfab box. And inside you get your carbon fiber filament. Uh, they do say on the website that it's extremely abrasive and you're not to really use it on regular brass nozzles. I just said YOLO and went for it and I haven't really seen any damage to the nozzles so far. To be honest, um, the price of the standard nozzles are so cheap that I would just go for it. Don't worry, it's not going to block it and break instantly. I've been putting heaps with it so far. Um, I don't even know if you can get stainless steel nozzles for the Flash Forge Dreamer, which is what they recommend on Colorfab's website. But yeah, uh, don't let that scare you. It actually prints really easily. Um, I haven't had any warping issues with it. I haven't tried to print support with the carbon fiber. I've always done support with the ABS separately in a different nozzle with the Flashforge. So um, that works fine, but um, I haven't really tried it with support as carbon fiber. But in terms of the, um, the rigidity from the parts, I've never seen a, um, any FGM prints that rigid. It's freaking insane. 
So thanks for watching, guys. Just a bit of an update on some exotic filaments I've been playing with. Thanks to uh, X3D for lending me that. I'm really keen to actually make that quadcopter frame properly out of it and see how it flies. Um, I have heard from some other guys that the ABS frame is a little bit too flexible, so hopefully the carbon fiber stiffness will help that. I am going away for a couple of days, so I am planning still to do the final uh, computer dumpster dive video, but I just haven't had time to get the grip, get to grips with the system, unfortunately. But that will be coming, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. Ask me any questions you like about printing with these materials. I've been printing with them heaps, so I've done lots of tips and tricks. And if you've got Simplify 3D, I can send you, like, the config files or something. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, and I'll see you again here soon on Maker's Muse. Bye.